Hi. Hi. I have a red bit. It's about a rebellion. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so I started out um, thinking about this topic by um, thinking about this question because um, that's what a lot of our clients are asking us about. What does it mean to be a marketer today and how do we make sure that we're ahead and relevant and speaking to the right people and all the questions that come out of that. So um, I found a book that I'm going to talk a little bit about, but um, the premise of this question actually has some sub questions under it that I'm going to unpack that will lead us to the definition. Um, can our audience hear us? So obviously, if you want to be a good marketer, hopefully you're connecting to someone. So the interesting thing is that this is what our reality now looks like in terms of messages that get thrown at us. Um, over 87,000 tweets a minute, uh, 3.8 million Google searches um, every minute of every day, 41.6 million text messages sent. That's roughly 94 texts per day per person in the US. Um, those are just a few of the, the crazy stats on this chart. Um, essentially, it has led us into this era of content shock, um, or basically we're falling off the cliff of not ever being able to keep up with the amount of content that is being created, and it's only exponentially going to grow. So that's a little scary as a marketer. Okay, well, all right, but maybe when we can get through, we can talk to them, they'll believe us, right? So more bad news. Um, it's no secret that many consumers are skeptical of marketing and advertising, years of pop-up ads and out-of-touch publicity stunts and some offensive content has made people be really suspicious. Um, so really just 4% of consumers now, according to a recent study, believe advertisers are honest. Yikes. Um, trust in brands is at a 10-year low. And 92% of customers around the world only trust recommendations from friends or family members. So nothing from a brand whatsoever. OK, OK. Well, what about like at a more tactical level, like maybe if we're just doing some of the things right, they're going to listen, right? So that's a challenge, too. Um, obviously, we have ad blockers. We've had them for a while. Um, the growth of that particular tool has exponentially grown in the last few years. Um, people are really sick of the constant assault on their senses. And so there's been an escalation in um, the technology for ad blocking and then the media technology to get through the ad blocking and then ad blocking gets better. And, so it just goes on and on and on. Um, and really what this, the, the other piece of this too is that there's a rise of subscription models. So obviously Netflix was a big pioneer, but now everyone and Disney and everyone is gonna have their own subscription model. So um, what that means as a consumer is maybe I get my video with Netflix and I get my music with Spotify and I get my news from Washington Post and my dinner from Blue Apron and my meditation from Headspace and it's all without ads. So marketing is still happening, though. It's just happening without the brands. Two thirds of our marketing is now being driven by customer generated activities. Quick test. Raise your hand if you visited a store or website in the last week because of an ad you saw. OK, good. Raise your hand if you visited a website or a store in the last week because a friend told you about something cool. A lot more. So the truth is. Customers are, oh, there's some sound there. They're rebelling. They don't care about our content plans, our whiz-bang tech, any of those ways that we're trying to prove to them that we're relevant. They're rebelling against these old models of advertising. So anything coming from a corporate entity is now suspect. And the thing is, though, they still have problems that they want help solving. They just don't want it in a cold, heartless, impersonal way. Um, they, it's frankly annoying to get what they want. They want a new way. And that's where this book comes in, that I told you I was going to talk about a book. Um, and the premise of this book is it's making the case to not focus as much on marketing, at least not the way that we think about it, uh, because only a third of the conversation is going to be around that way. So how do we influence the two thirds that is taking place without us? So no marketing, what does that look like? So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the principles from this book, how we can win from the rebellion for our clients, 
and specifically how red pepper is poised to support those clients. So first of all, for brands and how they can win, essentially they need to act more human, stop being so tech focused and um, content driven from a, you know, this is what should work standpoint and just act like a person. So a few ways that they can do this. Number one, start with why. This is something that we've talked about here um, ever since I've been around. Um, it comes from this idea uh, from Simon Sinek, which essentially says it's not so much about what you do or what product and service you have, it's why are you doing it? And that has never been more important than today because consumers are craving to understand how are you trying to do something better? Why are you here? besides just trying to sell me something. Because if it's not a deeper level, then I really don't have time for you. So that why is really important. A great example of this um, is Everlane. That's a clothing company aimed to disrupt the fashion agency, the fashion industry rather. Um, and they distill their why in just 16 words, which is on their homepage. But it's about ethical factories and radical transparency. And everything they do reinforces that concept. Number two, being curious about customers. So I uh, talked a little bit about the why, but it's also about the audience why. So what's important to them? Um, research published recently by Harvard Business Review found that loyalty activities like content plans and engagement activities really don't work as well as just a sense of shared meeting, meaning. So aligning with that value, aligning with the why. Number three, be curious about your fellow humans. So this um, should make a lot of sense. Obviously, we are curious about each other. We want to connect. And if brands do that, they can win. Um, a great example of this is PBR. If you are of a certain age, you probably remember the old PBR that was very uncool and a dying brand. Um, so years ago, they knew that. So what they started doing was really listening to people, hanging out in bars, just talking to them and finding people that were drinking PBR and asking them why. And it turned out that a lot of millennials were really drawn to PBR because it was kind of unhip and it was just doing its thing. And so PBR said, okay, we'll be the brand about that. And they started supporting really kind of avant-garde activities and weird things like skating parties and juggling contests um, and inviting people to be part of the creativity of just doing things to do it. Um, and in five years, the brand grew 55%. So again, part of that co-creation and being authentic and not really caring, you don't have to, but we're just here to do this, is something that really resonates. Um, so yes, talking to consumers, no, really talking to them, and creating a space where they can feel at home, and maybe talking to them some more. Um, and then number three, tell a story. Um, no one does this better than Yeti, and I forgot that this had sound. Um, but we love Yeti for a reason, because they have gone out of their way to find people who really inhabit the qualities that they believe in as a brand, and then they make these beautiful vignettes that are really focused on those people, not so much the coolers that they make and all of the gear. It might be in this video, but it's not the subject of it, and that makes all the difference in the world. So being human means acting human. It means the purpose of marketing isn't to sell anymore. It's to build emotional connections by bringing people together about something real, something ca they care about and that you care about, and then repeating and multiplying that. So simply put, brands need to just be there to make life better, not to sell. And in this marketing rebellion, marketers can only join if they have that authentic purpose that helps make life better, and they're creating experiences of shared value again and again. So essentially a journey of value. So that brings us to Red Pepper. So a journey of co-creation. Well, that's interesting because we are an explorer brand, and an explorer's purpose in life is to seek freedom, discovery, authentic meaning, and to answer big life questions such as, why am I here? What is my purpose? So we are uniquely situated to help our clients into this new rebellion. And there's a couple ways that I want to talk about concretely how we can do that. Number one, knowing the peak end rule. Um, this is all about understanding that every experience has a peak, 
and an end, and those are the things that are going to create that memory that's going to be the difference between somebody talking about your brand and not talking about it to a friend. So if you want to control that two-thirds of the marketing that's happening, really having a solid understanding of those points on a journey and making the most of them is going to be essential. Number two, be curious. So we could all be more curious in supporting our clients in their quest to be more curious for their customers. We can ask for our clients why. We can ask how they're trying to make life better. Be curious about their customers. Understand their business reason for hiring us. And ask clients if we can talk to customers more. And then number three, make sure that we're anchoring stories in emotion. Emotion is how people make decisions. It has to be authentic. It has to be a place uh, coming from a place of caring. Um, one tool in our toolbox for helping get there quickly um, to the right emotion are seven deep metaphors. So it's very similar to archetypes in that it's something that is ingrained in our brains at birth, and it's a way that we make sense of the world. And if you can tap into these in creative execution, it's like a, a little shortcut to emotion. So to recap, we can win this rebellion really just by making sure that our clients are staying human and that we are supporting them in that quest through our Explorer lens. So to answer the original question, what does it mean to be a marketer today? Well, it means we have to be the most human possible because the most human company wins. Thank you. Thank you.